Hey there, this is Shannon Keebler with Empower Consulting, and we're going to talk about double digit divisors. And if you didn't watch my video previous to this, you might want to go back and watch that one first as we talk about single digit divisors and we really set the stage for what does it mean to conceptually understand long division and how do we relate the various methods. So this is going to be an add on to that video as we dive into um, adding a place value when it comes to those divisors. So just a reminder that you can connect with me online at EmpowerLearnGrow.com. Uh, you can see me at EmpowerLearnGrow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. I hope to see you online. So let's dive right into this long division. I'm going to show you two separate methods here, and it depends on kind of the struggle that your students are having as to which method they might prefer. And so the first one we're going to do is uh, where we're going to estimate this divisor. So if we had, let's say, 3,684, and we had that many paper clips, and we had to share them with 24 boxes. Um, 24 is not a very friendly number for my brain, and so it's easier for me to be thinking mentally if I thought, oh, okay, well, I think it's about 20. Some kids might do 25, but I prefer anything that has a zero at the end because it helps me with my multiplication. So I'm going to say, um, keep rounding with that 20, and what I'm thinking is if I have 3,684 paper clips and I have to give them to 20 boxes, what's the largest amount of paper clips I could give away in a single round? And I don't want to give one away at each turn because that's just going to take me forever. So I want to think, can I put, give these out in larger groups? So to get started, for those of my friends that struggle with that multiplication, I'm going to make a little chart over here and I say if I gave every one of my 20 boxes uh, one paper clip, I would have only given out 20 paper clips. If I gave them two paper clips each, I would have given out 40, three paper clips at 60, so on and so forth. And so you can start to see that I make this little chart here for myself. And uh, this goes by much quicker as students start to learn the patterns of multiplying by tens, hundreds, etc. And so in the beginning, they do make this full chart, but as they keep going, they find they don't need um, to make it every time or at least the completed chart. So then I say, well, what if I gave it out in groups of 10 instead? So what if I said I gave every um, box of those 20 paper clips, 10 paper clips to start? Well, then I would say, well, then I gave out two, or 200 paper clips in the first round. What if I gave everyone 20 paper clips to start? And that would be 40. So I'm going to do it by groups of 10 as I come down this chart now. So as I use the chart, we'll get all the way through here. We can say if I took it out 10 times, it was 200, right? If I took out, if I gave everyone 10 paper clips at once, I gave out 200 in that round. If I gave everyone 20 paper clips at once, I gave out 400 paper clips. If I gave everyone 30 paper clips, so you can see 20 or 10, 20, 30. Then I would say, well, let's just uh, do up by hundreds because I have a number here in the thousands. So I think I could at least go up to a hundred times. So if I gave every box of paper clips, I had 20 boxes and I gave every single box of paper clips a um, hundred paper clips, right? Well, then I would have given out 2,000 in the first round. I could have given out 4,000 if I gave everyone 200. I would have given out 6,000 if I gave everyone 300. And you can start to see the point. I'm going to stop at 8,000 because my number is actually only 3,684. I don't want to keep going and just waste my time. So I could have stopped even after this 4,000, which is an important note to make for kids. So I only go down my list, you know, about 10 um, multiples or so. And then I say, I have 3,684 paper clips. What's the largest amount of paper clips I could give out in a round? Let's go back to my lists. And where am I closest to 3,684? And we should see that I'm closest, I'm going to get a different color for us all. I'm closest right here. So 4,000 goes over. So I'm going to say, if I took it out in a group of 100, I got 2,000. So I'm going to give a 100 right here to every one of my boxes of paper clips. Well, over to the side is where I start to think, do my thinking, and I say, well, 24 groups um, of 100, because now I'm not going to do it by 20. I need to know the real amount because I uh, really have 24 boxes. This was just an estimate my first round. So 24 times 100, we know, is 2,400. So I'm going to say I actually shared 2,400 paper clips. So how many do I have left? 
I have 1,284 paper clips that I still have to share. So now I'm going to come back over to my list and I'm going to say, well, now that I'm back at my list, I, what's the closest amount or how much can I give out in this next round of paper clips without going over 1,284? So where's that on my list? It looks like it's between these two numbers. Well, 1,400 is too much. 1,200 seems the right amount, but I took them out in groups of 10. So this was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I took out a group of 60 and let's see if that works. So if I did 24 times 60, I know that 60 times 4 is 240, and 60 times 20 is 1,200. And altogether, that's 1,440. Oh no, it's bigger than what I actually have to share. So this number cannot be 60. This number has to go down, and I'm going to go with 50 because that's still down by a 10. And so if I go down by 10, let's see what happens. 24 times 50, I know that 50 times 4 is 200, and 50 times 20, and we get 1,000. And those numbers aren't lined up very well, so go with me on that one, and I get 1,200. Okay, so now I have 1,200, and I know that 1,200 I can do because I have more than that to share. So I actually shared 50 in each box. That means I shared 1,200 altogether, which means I have 84 paper clips remaining. Well, I have 84 paper clips remaining. Let's go back over and let's see if we can find where my next step is. I have 84. What's the closest I can get? Oh, it looks like it's between 80 and 100. So let's see. One, two, three, four. If I put four paper clips in every box, and I had 24 boxes of four, what's my answer gonna be? I'm gonna get 96. Well, 96 is more than 84, so that estimate was a little high, so let's try 24 times three. So I'm gonna erase my four, because that was too many, and 24 times three then is 72. Oop, my eraser was on, there we go, is 72. So I know that it's three. So I'm gonna give every paper clip box three paper clips. That means I shared 72 altogether. That means I had 12 remaining. Well, 12 paper clips, unless I break them apart into different pieces, are not going to share evenly with 24 boxes. So altogether, my friends, I shared 153 in each box with a remainder of 12. So let's go to another example here, but I want you to see on this one that it kind of gets out some of this mathematics, this multiplication out of the way right away. Um, and they still have to do a little bit of trial and error because they're estimating to get a, a close amount. But when they're doing their actual math, they're still using these base 10 numbers, which in general are much easier for us to multiply together. So let's go to this next example. And this example is one that um, you would probably see um, if you look up um, like Marilyn Burns work. She does this method a lot as well. And instead of keeping track on top, which is what we just did with expanded notation, she's going to have you keep track down the side. And I think visually you'll see why this is helpful. Um, so I'm actually going to start way up here then. We're going to use the same problem. And we have 3,684 paper clips, and we're going to share it with 24. The, pe the reason that people like this method, is including students, is because they're not estimating and they don't have to make that chart. However, the chart does help them with the easy uh, multiplying of tens, hundreds, etc. And so they still may decide to do a chart even with this method. But I'm going to ask myself, what's the largest amount I can take out, um, the group amount? Well, if I took out 1,000 right here, Right? Well, 1,000 times 24, that'd be 24,000. I don't even have 24,000 paper clips to share. So 1,000 is too many. So what if I took out 100? So I'm going to keep track of that over here. So let's use a different color. And I'm going to say, what if I took out 100? So I gave every 100 paper clips to 24 boxes. That means altogether I would have shared 2,400 paper clips. I still have some left over. So I have. 1,284 paper clips. So I still have some um, paper clips I have to share, and I'm really liking this whole 100 thing. So could I share it as another group of 100? If I shared 100, 
That means I'd have to give out another 2,400 paper clips, but I only have 1,284. So that's not gonna work. I can't bring them out in groups of 100. What else does my brain like that is not hundreds? And they should say tens. So hang on with me on this round because we're gonna go by tens and you might think it's a little um, repetitive, but I think you'll see how it would help some of our students and then we can make sense of it as we're finished. So if I gave every box of 24 paper clips, 10 paper clips at one time, I would have given out 240 paper clips. 240 paper clips, I would have still had 1,044. I did not get rid of very many paper clips in that first round, but I could still do another 10 if I wanted to, right? And I could still go and I'd do 240 more. And so you're gonna to start to see that I could do this by tens for as long as I needed to. And I could just keep going. So I'm gonna keep going here. And I think you're starting to get the point that if I did another 10, we're almost there, my friends. I have 84 um, paper clips currently left. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my 84 up here. I'm still sharing that with 24 boxes. I just ran out of room. Okay, so now I know that I can't bring it out on a group of 10 because 10 would leave 240. So I can't do 10. So what if I changed now and I gave it out in groups of one. Well, if I gave out every box of 24 one paper clip, I would have shared 24 paper clips. I still have 60. Shared one. Oh my goodness, you can start to see how I could keep going. And now I have extras. So can I do it by tens and then by ones? Absolutely. Are you starting to see how that might drive some of our kids nuts or more importantly, or not more importantly, but um, more likely is it drive you crazy as a teacher? Sure. It's going to take them longer, but when they do this, you can point out then at the end, how couldn't I have taken out more than just a group of 10? Couldn't I have taken out 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, a group of 50? When I only took out 10 and I saw that I still had 1,044 left, that should have told my brain I didn't take out a big enough chunk. I didn't have enough to take out another 100, but what's between 10 and 100 that's a bigger chunk that's more reasonable for me to try out? It could have been 30. It could have been even 20. It would have lessened these steps. But still, kids can fall back on doing it by 10s if accuracy is an issue. And then I could have seen, oh, I didn't have to do it by once. I could have taken out a group of three or maybe put done two over here in the sidelines. But I do like to do it by place value in that it's still hundreds, tens, and ones, which is exactly what they did in place value sections in our previous video. So we don't have to know the exact amount um, and be rounding 24, thinking uh, what times 24 gives me, because that's a lot of mental multiplication that is going to use up a lot of our working memory. So now as I add this all up, I can see it's 153 remainder 12. So either way, whether you do it the way that we started with, and you make a chart that's over here. You can see our chart. We'll do another color so we can see it again. And, oh, there it goes. And you see our other, this number here, right? We make our chart so they can see how many paper clips are left and about how big of a chunk we can take out. And then you practice doing the real multiplication over to the side. Or if you use this strategy where you keep track down the side. Now, keep in mind, you could take this down the side um, and you could do it just right up here at the top like you did place value expanded, um, expanded sections like we did before. And it would just be 100 up here and then they do 10 and you could keep track of it going up. I do like going down because it tracks with each move. Each time I put 10 in each box, it tells me how much I shared all together. I put 10 in each box, it, shares, it tells me how much I shared all together. I do like that for our kids that are still struggling with what it means to long divide. So I hope that helps you with two digit divisors when you're doing a division. And I'd love to hear from you and what you think. So make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you online. Visit me at www.empowerlearngrow.com. This is Shannon Keebler. We'll see you soon.